Hello, investors and traders, and welcome to the Weekly Market Report with the Market Guys. I'm AJ Monte. Well, this week we hit all of our target numbers from last week's forecast with the exception of one, and that was the Russell 2000. I'm going to save that one for last because it looks as though the Russell is a little bit overextended to the downside, and we could most likely see a bounce in that next week but let's first start with the diamonds this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF ticker symbol DIA and as I zoom in here you'll see that this was the close from last Friday on the 28th right there and at that time after the market closed I said that we would most likely drift up with the end of this line right here being my target now interestingly enough we opened up on Monday and hit the target on the first trading day of the week. And then we drifted up until Wednesday, then pulled right back to the moving average. So remember, I said that we would most likely not have a big range and that we're more or less stuck in a trading range here. But for next week, I'm just going to erase the forecast from last week because that was hit. Let me draw what I think we could see for next week. And I think we're going to see a bounce off of that moving average right here. That's a 20-period moving average. I think we'll see a bounce. And one of the reasons I say that is because for the last three days since Wednesday, and then you can see again Thursday and Friday, we had red candles. But on Friday right here, this is October 5th as I record this, you'll see that there's a drop in the volume. That tells us that the sellers are starting to lose some of that momentum. So that's the first sign of a possible bounce for next week. The second sign is that on Monday we gapped up. You see this? Monday we gapped up and this gap was left open. Again, Thursday the gap was filled. Friday, again, was starting to bounce off of that moving average. And 80% of the time after a gap fills, the market has a tendency to reverse. The other sign that I see is that we have a long shadow under the candle from today's close. That tells us that towards the end of the day, the buyers are rallying off of the lows, and that too is bullish. Now, Saturday the 6th, we have a big vote in the Senate. It's hard to say how investors are going to react to this because today numbers came out unemployment numbers are the lowest that they've been since 1969 and while the market opened up positive this morning it eventually traded and drifted lower on that positive economic news so what's happening is that the markets are more or less fearing the higher interest rates the bond market sold off and I think that's what's shaking up investors for the short term here but I think again we'll see some optimism creep back in on Monday and Tuesday and then we'll have to see whether or not we hit the target right there now for the spiders that's ticker symbol SPY you'll see that we hit the target again early on in the week this was my forecast from last Friday's close, and you can see that we did hit that target on Monday. Tuesday, we maintained that level around target. Wednesday, we opened up higher above the target and then started pulling back. Now, again, you see a slight drop in that negative volume right there with a long shadow under the candle. So I'm going to erase this line, and if you look very closely right here, there is a minor gap from that low to the high on Thursday. So 80% of the time gaps fill, then after they fill, there's an 80% chance that it'll reverse. So I think what we'll see on Monday and Tuesday, possibly right into the rest of the week, I think we'll see a move back up to fill that gap. And then we'll have to see whether or not the markets reverse from that point. But again, the spiders are looking more bullish than bearish. Now I'm going to hop to the VIX because the volatility index is really the leading indicator that helps us determine where the S&P is going to wind up. 
Last week I said that the VIX would most likely drop to test this support level. And I even went so far to extend this line out. You see this was added on to this line here. And so I said that we would test that and possibly bounce. Well, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, look at Wednesday. I have to zoom in here because this is pretty incredible. To the penny, right to the penny, we hit that support level, and then what happened? It bounced. On Thursday, the VIX gapped up. You see that? The VIX gapped up, and then Friday, the VIX pulled back early on to fill the gap, and then it rallied. I'm going to erase this line because the VIX right now is a little overextended from this moving average. And let me back out one notch here. You could see that we are at a resistance point right here on the VIX. And I think that the VIX is most likely going to pull right back and test not the support level. I think it's going to pull back halfway here and test this 20 period moving average. I'm going to extend that moving average out to show you where I'm going to draw that minor support level. So I think the VIX is going to pull back to that moving average, and then we'll have to determine whether or not this is going to bounce from there, which, of course, because it's inversely related, that could be negative. But for now, a pullback in the VIX being inversely related to S&P will be slightly bullish for the S&P, and we already discussed that. Now, let's look at the Qs. This is a tech sector. Early on, we hit my target right there. The end of this line right here is my target. Again, if you're following the market, guys, understand this is going to be a repeating pattern with me. When I draw lines, the end of the line is going to be the target. So we hit that target right on Monday. I'm going to erase all lines. You can even see the previous lines that we drew back here. You see these lines? These are all former forecast lines, so you can see how accurate things are. I'm going to erase all the lines right now just to clean up the chart and point out to you this minor gap right here. You see that from the low on Wednesday to the high on Thursday, you see this minor gap right there. That leads me to believe that the Qs are going to rally up as well next week. And again, 80% chance that that gap will fill, and then we'll have to wait to see if it reverses from that gap fill point. But right now, short term, it looks bullish, and we have a long shadow underneath that red candle, which tells us that the buyers are starting to move back in. Now, as I started off, I said that the Russell 2000 was the only one that did not hit our target. Pretty incredible, actually, because on Monday, we started off the week with... A, a contradiction to the bullish engulfing pattern back here. Remember, last Friday, I thought we would rally because of that bullish engulfing pattern, and we're right at a roll reversal support. Well, guess what? We did not hit that target. So I would still say we have a very accurate reading from last week's forecast, but look what's happening now. Let me erase these lines right here and show you a couple of things. We have a long stretch below that 20-period moving average. We call that the rubber band effect, right? See, when the market moves that far below or even above that moving average, it has a tendency to snap back to the moving average. So I think that we will see a snapback right to it. Secondly, you look at the stochastics right here, this blue line is the percent K. That measures the momentum of the market. So the momentum is starting to shift up, according to this indicator, and it's almost ready to cross. When the blue line is below this 20% reading right here, that's oversold. When it starts to move up and crosses and creates that buy signal, buyers have a tendency to follow stochastics and they'll start moving in with their money to buy up the market. And then again, like the other markets, we have a long shadow underneath that candle, which tells us that the buyers are coming in. You can see that we started the bounce almost perfectly. It almost came down to the penny there of that support level. So I think that support level will hold and, again, attract more buyers into the market. If you'd like to learn more about what we do at The Market Guys, just go to themarketguys.com. Click on this video tab up here. 
and it'll bring you to a library of videos that we call market shots. They're about six to seven minutes long. If you scroll down, you'll see the rubber band effect right there. Very short video. You can even see in my example here, it looks very similar to what we just described in the Russell 2000. And if you scroll down even more, right below that is trading the gap. This week, our focus is going to be on the rubber band effect and trading the gap. Make sure you check those videos out. Again, very short. You could fit them into any kind of time schedule, even if you don't have much time. Very, very short, and you could look at them at your leisure. So have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you soon. So long. This video segment is a small part of what the Market Guys offer through their educational products and services. If you are interested in any of our trade alert services or you would like more information about our one-on-one -on -one mentoring program, simply contact us at info at